understanding why IVF sometimes fails. And there are some new insights for patients and professionals. The recurrent implantation failure is a frustrating and financially taxing problem for many couples undergoing IVF or other forms of assisted conception. Rigor implantation failure means that despite transferring good quality embryos multiple times, pregnancies do not occur. Traditionally, doctors have focused on women's age as a main risk factor. However, this new study using advanced machine learning and the latest European Society Human Reproduction and Embryology criteria reveals a more complex picture. Researchers analyzed over 15,000 ART cycles at a major fertility center in China, identifying 298 women with repeated implantation failure or 2,000 controls who became pregnant quickly. They collected detailed information on each patient's medical records, hormone levels, uterine health, previous pregnancies. They ranked 32 possible risk factors for repeated implantation failure, which were the most important. One, low levels of the anti-Mullerian hormone AMH, a hormone that reflects the number of eggs left as the strongest predictor of repeated implantation failure. And in fact, it leveled with age in predicting who struggled with repeated implantation failure. This is very crucial as AMH is one of the commonest tests that we do. It also found that chronic endometritis, a silent inflammation of the uterine lining and intrauterine adhesions, scar tissue inside the uterus, major independent risk factors, and women with these conditions may not have obvious symptoms. Higher body mass index, high FSH levels indicating that the ovaries are failing, high testosterone, again showing complexity of PCOS, advanced age, endometrial polyps, and a history of recurrent pregnancy loss, or in fact even a caesarean section previously, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and rheumatic diseases also increase the risk. Women with higher AMH and those who had previous live birth, in fact, have a lower risk of repeated implantation failures. And what does it mean? It means that the reproductive history and ovarian reserve both play protective roles. For clinicians, it's important that you have an AMH test done. You look for signs of chronic endometritis, reduce weight, look out for polyps, and I think you probably need to consider giving appropriate advice in somebody having a very low AMH or with advancing age.